Join the LFR family Patreon for exclusive Patreon content. All the rock you want. Also, cop y'all some merch, bruh. Shit. Man, I'm contemplating your moves. You lose, now your hot you gave me. New moves, more dudes, now the top you made me. Same rules, new crew, now the club you made me. Hey, what's up, LFR family? And shout out to They Will Kill You channel. Y'all are dope, man. Um, Welcome back, guys. Hey, don't forget. Don't forget, guys. <laughs> Join the Patreon. All right, we done found something that we like to look at now. Um, and this right here is the eight honeymoons, 800 mo eight honeymoons turned fatal. Let me turn this up just a little bit. Eight honeymoons turned fatal. We about to watch this joint, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments below, man. These joints are crazy on They Will Kill You site, man. All right, y'all ready? Let's do it. From abnormal accidents to premeditated murders, these are eight honeymoons turned fatal. Whoever knew marriage's lifelong bond could be so short-lived. Shout out to Murray, folks. <laughs> Number eight, Sven Fouch and Chantel Byer. Newlyweds Sven Fouch and Chantel Bayer were enjoying their honeymoon in South Africa when things took a deadly turn. The couple was visiting the Aloe Ridge Nature Reserve near Johannesburg when they stopped by a group of rhinos to take some photos. That's when one of the rhinos attacked Chantel, goring the 24-year-old woman to near death. Oh my As the God. story goes, the park ranger responsible for taking the couple around suggested that Chantel stand a bit closer to the animals as he took a few pictures. It was at this moment the rhino attacked, charging Chantel and tossing her into the air. Though she survived the- This is crazy, man. I don't know what I would have done, bro. I- God damn, my shit. We just now got married and now you, a rhino is trying to dag on do things to my wife. And they probably wasn't even trying to kill her. They probably were just trying to play. Or probably got horny. I don't know, man. That's crazy. This moment, the rhino attacked, charging <laughs> Chantel and tossing her into the air. Though she survived the assault, the rhino managed to break some of her ribs and collapsed the lung in the process. Wow. Number seven, Michaela McCarrivy. January 10th, 2011. Michaela McCarrivy, daughter of famed soccer coach Mickey Hart, was enjoying her honeymoon in Mauritius when she was strangled to death in her hotel room. Authorities initially suspected her husband John of perpetrating the crime, but they soon discovered another suspect in the cold-blooded killing. John told police that he and his wife were having a relaxing lunch when Michaela decided to go back to their room to retrieve something. She was then attacked by two hotel employees, who decided to rob the hotel room of their valuables. To their surprise, Michaela returned and the hotel employees panicked. They wrestled her to the ground, strangled her to death, then placed her body in a bathtub, which was then turned on. John returned several minutes later to the room to discover her dead body. After ruling him out as a suspect, it was quickly discovered who the murderers really were. Avinash Tribuun, Sandeep Monea, and Raj Tikoy. But the nine-member jury of the court ultimately ruled the three men not guilty due to a lack of DNA evidence. What? This sparked harsh criticism of the Mauritian government. Michaela's native country of Ireland even suggested a boycott of their country, saying the island's tourism sector was unsafe for travelers. That's crazy, bruh. We done went through this and nobody's held accountable for my wife being... Come on, man. That's crazy. You try... What? Number ah, six, bruh. Cody Johnson. Jordan Graham and Cody Johnson were married for only eight days when Jordan pushed her husband crazy. Cody off a cliff to his death in Montana's Glacier National Park. There were no living witnesses to the incident, and Graham claimed that she had been in a heated argument with her husband when she shoved him out of anger. But as it turns out, the couple was standing atop a cliff when all this took place, and Johnson plummeted to his death. Jordan Graham fled the scene and later reported her husband missing. Oh, I'm hearing popcorn through my speakers. I wonder what's going on. Okay. I'm, my bad, guys. I'm hearing popcorn through my speakers. Don't know what's going on. Plummeted to his death. Jordan Graham fled the scene and later reported her husband missing. Friends and relatives searched for Johnson for four days straight, but to no avail. Graham even pretended to be a part of the search effort and eventually led them to a spot where she thought he might be, telling them she speculated that he might have gone there. A surveillance tape later revealed, however, that the couple entered the park together and that Graham had later on left alone. She eventually pleaded guilty to second degree murder and in March of 2014 was sentenced to 30 years in prison. 
What did he do? Tina Watson. He didn't deserve that. Gabe and Tina Watson, a newlywed couple from Alabama, were scuba diving in Australia after being married for only 11 days. It was at this point during their honeymoon that Tina was killed under what authorities believed to be suspicious circumstances. Tina Watson had recently become a certified scuba diver, but somehow lost consciousness during their most recent scuba expedition and drowned to death. Gabe claimed to have been attempting to get the dive rope to Tina since they were diving in such strong currents, but he claimed that as he was doing so, she began sinking faster than he could rescue her. Nearby divers told investigators that they saw the two engaging in some sort of underwater bear hug moments before Tina drowned. Another diver, who was actually a doctor by profession, was in the middle of taking a photo of his wife when he accidentally snapped a photo of Tina's lifeless body laying on the ocean floor. The doctor also claimed that he watched Gabe leave his wife behind, taking nearly three minutes to swim back up to the ocean surface. Other witnesses added that he was relaxed and in a talkative mood once at the surface, while others were attempting to save Tina's life. Additionally, Gabe changed his personal recollection of what had happened over a dozen times. This, along with the other eyewitness accounts, ultimately forced him to plead guilty in court in 2009. Despite receiving a four-year sentence, he served just one in an Australian prison as Alabama prosecutors asked him to be extradited to the United States to stand trial for murder in Alabama. This was due to the fact that a coroner found evidence showing that Tina likely died from Gabe turning off her air supply and holding onto her until the point of unconsciousness, then letting her drown. Furthermore, Tina's father indicated that Gabe asked Tina to make him the sole beneficiary of her life insurance shortly before their marriage. In the end, Gabe Watson was tried for murder in Alabama, with the judge dismissing the case due to a lack of evidence. Number 4 Wait a minute, bruh. Come on, man. This... What? Come on, man. You can't just go around killing people and then not have to pay for it, man. That sucks with the judge sucks, dismissing man. the case due to a lack of evidence. Number 4. Michael and Nicole Abel Michael and Nicole Abel were a freshly married couple from Pittsburgh on their honeymoon in Hawaii when they were killed in a helicopter crash in 2011. Also on board were Canadians Stuart Robertson and Eva Wannershow with pilot Nathan Klein. The newlyweds, both of whom were described as talented engineers, were five days into their Hawaiian honeymoon when they decided to take a helicopter tour. All five passengers were killed during the crash. An investigation into the incident found that errors by the pilot, as well as weather conditions, led to the fatal crash. Pittsburgh news network WTAE states that the group was sightseeing in West Maui when Klein attempted to fly over some mountains but failed to give the helicopter enough space to clear them. They crashed and the aircraft caught fire. While the exact details of the crash are unclear, it is known that this flight in particular was Klein's third tour of the day. There had also been a massive rainstorm not long before the tour along with high winds and a low cloud base that likely impeded the pilot's vision. Number 3 Luke Day, for me. Damn, Egypt, 2009. Luke Day was honeymooning with his bride Sophie Nicholson Cole when he drowned to death. Day worked as a high school French teacher and was on a tour of the Nile River with his new bride and a couple other tourists when a strong storm caused their boat to be swamped with water. In an act of valor, they helped Sophie- I don't trust all that day on water, no way. Damn that, man. It's too way too much water in the world, man. I don't trust the water, bro. I don't trust- I don't trust the water. I get in the pool. Probably go out about 10 feet in the ocean, but that's it. That's it. Strong storm caused their boat to be swamped with black water. Black, in an yeah. act of valor, they helped Sophie and several others back on the boat to safety before saving himself. His bravery proved fatal as a boat sank along with Day himself. The couple was on their months long honeymoon, which was to conclude with a cruise down the Nile on a small Felucha boat. But during their first night on the boat, a massive storm that destroyed nearby houses turned the water from calm to dangerous, with waves several feet high violently rocking the boat from side to side. The boat's skipper ushered his four passengers under the deck, which proved to be dangerous as it caused the boat to capsize. As the couple and two other passengers tried scrambling to safety, they assisted everyone else in exiting the boat but was drowned himself. Sophie, who worked as an environmental researcher and climate change expert, spent the next three hours frantically searching for her husband in the Nile's muddy, toxic water. This proved futile and she was unable to find the body. Although she was initially questioned by Egyptian authorities, Sophie was able to return to the UK and stated that the incident made her feel as though she had been torn in half. Wow. Number 2. David Bulmer Rizzi wow. 
Marco Bomarizzi and husband David were celebrating their honeymoon in Australia when a tragic accident ended David's life. David fell to his death when he tripped down some stairs at a friend's house while Marco was asleep. He did not die instantly but instead cracked his skull and was rushed to a hospital. Marco later recalled his last moments with David as he told him goodbye and thanked him for being a good husband. It is unclear what exactly caused David to wow, fall, but bro. authorities speculate that he tripped walking up the stairs in the dark, then fell down backwards. After the incident, the state of South Australia did not officially recognize the gay marriage as valid when issuing the death certificate, claiming David's status as never married. While the couple was legally married in Sunderland, England, Australia does not permit same-sex marriage, requiring David's family to approve of the funeral arrangements instead of Marco himself. This drew harsh criticism, especially from David and Marco's friends and family, wow. who claimed Australia was acting in a discriminatory manner. According to one source, David's ashes were confiscated from Marco in Hong Kong on the way home as he was not the next of kin. Marco also claimed that the United Kingdom- How are you gonna take the man's ashes from his husband? That is crazy! That's crazy! How are you gonna do that? You can't just do stuff like that. That's just, that's crazy. That's crazy, bro. Government was unhelpful in confirming his status as David's legal spouse. South Australian Premier Jay Wetherill issued an apology for the manner in which his state handled the incident and vowed to push for the certificate to be changed. Number 1. Jonathan and Emma Gray 2011. A young couple named Jonathan and Emma Gray is killed during a quad bike accident, leaving their six-month-old child orphaned. The couple was from Halifax, England, but was vacationing on the island resort of Kuridu in the Maldives. Just before the accident, they were attending a party put on by a resort's employee they had just recently met. The party's host, Philippe Petre, then gave them a ride back to their villa on his quad bike, which he crashed when taking a curve too sharply. Jonathan and Emma were tragically killed upon impact, while Petra suffered only minor injuries. It took hours for anyone to discover the dead couple. Meanwhile, Petra fled the scene. He was charged with disobedience to order, but was eventually acquitted and returned to his native Sweden, making it unlikely that he will ever stand trial for the couple's death. The couple shown here was also on their honeymoon, and this photo in particular was taken moments before the wife watched her newlywed husband get eaten by sharks oh. right in front of her very own eyes. Find out more about this gruesome story today at theywillkillyou.com by clicking on the link at the top right corner of your screen. Wow, bro. That is crazy. What's going on with my daggone screen? From app. Yeah, that was crazy, man. Um, wow. Um, I don't know what to say. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was, wow. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. And um, if y'all know of any really good ones from They Will Kill You, y'all let me know what to check out, all right? Love y'all. Peace.